the fascinating history of the Adidas versus Puma rivalry. The story of Adidas and Puma is the story of two brothers who could have joined forces and taken down Nike, which is the world's top sports footwear brand today. In this video, we will talk about the interesting story of the rivalry between these brands. The and Rudy Dassler are brothers who later founded rival sportswear company, Adidas and Puma, which is the world's second and third top sports showwear company. Adolf Dassler, who later became Addy Dassler, started making shoes in 1924, shortly after he came back from World War I. The business blossomed, and his older brother Rudolf Dassler also joined him afterwards. Addy was the one with the brains between the two, as he was directing the creative manufacturing process in his shoes factory. Rudy, or Rudolf, was the one with the networking skills. He was the charismatic salesman. The goal of both brothers was to make their shoes a primary choice for athletes of the time. The thinking was that if the athletes could win a race while wearing their shoes, this would legitimize their product as authentic, and perhaps the only shoes that could give these athletes the winning edge. This did become a reality in the 1928 Olympics when a German distance runner Lena Radke won an 800-meter sprint with their spiked shoes on. She even set a new world record which was an even bigger victory for their newly found sports shoes company. The company continued to make a name for itself, and in the Olympics of 1936, Addy gave his shoes to athletes from all over the world. This time, their shoes paved the way for glory for the American track runner, Jesse Owens. Even though Jesse won the gold medal, the real victory was bagged by Gebruder Dassler, as 17 athletes winning medals were running with their shoes on. Owens alone won four gold medals, and he was marketing success in his own right for the company. However, matters inside the company were taking a turn for the worse, and the successful marketing campaigns meant little for the overall prospect of the company. During the most trying years of the Dassler brothers, the Nazis had started taking control of Germany. Nazis had become a force to be reckoned with in 1925, and they transformed Germany completely when Hitler took power as Germany's chancellor in 1933. Although during the early years of World War II, the Dassler Shoe Company continued producing track shoes, it soon had to divert its attention towards producing military-grade jackboots. The initial order was to produce almost 11,000 pairs of jackboots for the regime. Inside their own family, feuds had started to boil over. All these clashes emerged from the fact that the brothers with their wives and their children lived together. The older brother had later confided to Barbara Smith that Addie's young wife tried to interfere in the business despite her limited experience in the world of commerce and sportswear shoes especially. Rudy's somewhat antagonistic attitude towards Addie was because he was able to dodge a mandatory draft in 1940. The regime thought that Addie was very important for running the factory. However, Nazis apparently thought little of Rudy, since he had to be drafted into the army in 1943. Rudy began to think that Addy could not run the factory without him, and appointed his wife, Friedel, to act on his behalf. He instructed Addy to inform of all the business decisions that Addy took. Addy refused to defer to his older brother. Rudy then threatened Addy to pursue the closure of the factory, which would push Addy into a military draft again. The factory closure did eventually happen nonetheless. After six months of their somewhat heated exchange, the factory had to close down because of the Germans' total war campaign. Dassler had to quickly transition from manufacturing sportswear to jackboots, and then from jackboots to producing Panzerschrecks, which was a shoulder-mounted rocket launcher directed towards taking out Allied tanks. Rudy did not shy away from taking control of the factory away from Addy. Rudy did try to persuade his superiors to produce shoes from the factory instead of munitions, but he could not work his salesman charm on them. Rudy abandoned his post just days before the Soviets took control of it. Most importantly, Rudy was positioned in a Polish Jew camp, and he saved almost 800 Jews imprisoned there. Upon returning to his native town, Rudy was arrested by the Gestapo. When he was released after the war ended, Rudy was arrested by the American troops on the suspicion that he was working for the SS. The suspicion was fueled by Addy's and his wife's testimonies that Rudy was in fact an SS operative. Rudy was imprisoned for a year, leaving Addy in charge of the factory. However, Addy also had to face some consequences, the denazification panel to which Addy had earlier confessed and made false charges against Rudy required Addy to stop operating the Dassler factory. 
Rudy saw this as a chance to get a firm hold over the factory and alleged that it was Addy who was in fact wanted to transform his shoe company into a munitions producing factory. However, the panel did not seem convinced and awarded total control of the Dassler company to Addy in 1947. The brothers' infighting, the exchange of false charges, and the rise of the family feud all took a toll on the Dassler company. The formal separation between the brothers was finalized in 1948 when Gebruder Dassler split and the employees and assets were divided between the two branches operating on opposite sides of the Aurok River, which followed right through their native hometown of Herzaga Generaj. Aldi named his business Adidas, and Rudy later named his company Puma. The family business split between the two brothers was good news for local employment as most locals were hired either by Adidas or Puma. The rivalry between the two brothers had become the talk of the town. The animosity between the company had reached such a level that if someone worked for one company, they simply would not socialize with the employees of the other company. The division was so deeply etched that marrying between the employees of the two rival companies was strictly forbidden. Even customers could only go to their local factory store. Going across the river to buy something from the other store was a taboo of sorts. Interestingly, the fight was not restricted to the brothers alone. The sister, Mary, took Addie's side, and the mother, Paulina, supported Rudy. When the family assets were split, Addie got the factory and the family villa. Adidas today is leagues ahead of Puma in terms of sales and revenue generation, thanks to Addie's vision and creativity. And although Puma was behind Adidas, it still did really well. However, since both these companies were hard at war with each other, this gave a unique opportunity to a third company to take the throne in terms of sports shoe wear. This third company was Nike. Nike silently kept gaining market shares till it gained the dominant share of the market revenue. As of 2022, Nike was the dominant player in the sports shoe industry, with Adidas becoming the runners-up and Puma occupying the third place in the sportswear shoe market. To give you some scale, in 2017, Nike had generated $28 billion revenue while Adidas had produced revenue of about $13 billion and Puma generated about $3.5 billion. There were few times when the brothers actually talked, although for the most part the companies did work against each other. The company could finally move forward in 2009 when a friendly soccer match was played between the teams of both companies. This brings the video to a close. I hope you enjoyed this video. Which sports footwear brand do you prefer and why? Feel free to comment down below. Press the like button and subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching the video till the end and see you in the next one.